I'm going to show you how I taught Charlie to lead really good because I was having three problems with Charlie, which made him a nightmare to have to lead around on the, on the lead line. One, he would dive for grass with strength and power, and you'd be like, no! Number two, he would just stop walking. He would just stand there. He would try his little ploys to eat grass, and that was one of them. Like, he'd just stop. Like, I want to eat grass right here. And number three is, he would, when I was walking, when he finally started walking with me, he was like a freight train. He'd want to be ahead of me with his head and shoulders and like rushing me and pulling me along, basically. So all those are super annoying. I want my mule to walk and stand really good on the lead line. I, if I stand here and talk to my friends, I want him to stand there like this. I don't want him moving, pawing, trying to eat, and circling around me or none of those shenanigans. So I, you know, and I also don't want to be this rough root and toot and trainer. I just, because that's just not me really. I will put force into stuff if I need to, but I just don't want to have to do that all the time. So I want to show you the technique that I use. First of all, training him in my big yard here was not enough. He's just strong with stamina. And so I finally figured out I'm going to take him out. I mapped out a, with the car a three mile loop. So I'm like, I'm going to take him on for a walk on that three mile loop and make him walk perfect, like more practice. That worked perfect. That's one number one. Maybe your leading lessons aren't long enough. And then number two is just the technique I used. Don't have him on a tight lead line, which seems so opposite to what you feel you want to do. You feel like you want to get a chain over their nose and hold them right here and just get control of them it doesn't work you'll be doing that for the rest of the mule's life and mules live a long time so you have to go against what you're feeling especially a man a man feels like oh I'll put a chain over his nose and I'll really get a hold of him but really you won't mules are strong and you got to teach them the right way because once you're they're trained you're not controlling them they're trained and obedient there's a difference Okay, so number one is have them on a long lead line, like three feet, two to three feet. Don't pull on that. Just keep that loose like that. So, and when you're walking, you got to keep all this bunch, which isn't looped, just in case they do pull. You don't want to like get your hand caught, so don't loop it like that. Because what happens is if he does pull or scare, it tightens around your hand and that will really hurt you. Believe me, you will be like you'll feel like you're dying. So what I do is I go back and forth. I just hold it where I think I need it. Then I loop it that way and then that way back. And then the loops are on this side. And if he pulls, who cares? Nothing's wrapped around my hand. So just do it that way. Hold it there and then loop it on that side. And then you got it. And then you need a little extra and if you have a lead line with a little leather thingamajiggy on the end of it, it makes it all the more better. So I'm going to get into position how I'm going to walk him, and then I'm going to walk down there and demonstrate. He's pretty good now, and it only took about, I'm going to say, six lessons to make him, like, perfect. Okay, so this, I'm going to demonstrate how I do it. So I want him right here. I don't want his nose to pass me because that way I can't see that way when I'm walking. I want to be able to like look over there and see what's going on. If he's here, this is where he used to want to be. Right there or even here, like in front of me, like he was the boss. So I'm like, no, get behind me. While I'm walking, sometimes now he's so good. He will drop behind me like this and literally like he's following me like I'm a, like we're a horse trail line and he's behind me. I don't care about that either because his head's down, he's calm, no problem. I just don't want him here. That is super annoying to me personally. Okay, so how I prevented that is the first time I took him out on the three mile loop, I was doing the yanking and pulling with the rope halter with the knots. We came home. I was tired. He had little uh, hair rubs all where I was yanking him the whole time. I was like, clearly that's not working. I want something that's easier for me because he doesn't care. Stand. So then the next time I'm like, I'm going to take this little thingamajiggy here with the 
and I'm just going to go like this if he wants to pass me. And then, of course, sometimes I go like this. <laughs> now he knows. Now he'll back up because he doesn't want to get hit by that. It's, it's like an airplane propeller. And you can see how effective that is. Look, I'm just standing here. Good boy, Charlie. Now, if he starts to pass me after six lessons, I, I just have to go like this, barely. He's like, oh, okay, he gets it. At first, you're going to do a little faster because they just don't get it yet. And it's going to bop him. It's going to bop him right in the side of the nose right there. And he's going to be like, but pretty soon, it does not take long. And they're like, oh, that's no fun. Yes, he's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's still going to pass you in the beginning. He's going to go to the side to get away from your little airplane propeller. Don't sweat it. Just try to get him back into position where you want him and continue on like nothing. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate this. I'm gonna go down there. Now I try to do it at the trot too, because I want him to trot right alongside me perfect. But we're, we're just learning that part now. When I walk off, I don't wanna to have to tighten it up and grab him and start walking. I wanna have it loose, and basically I want him to follow me like a little puppy dog. Now when I stop, I want him to stop behind me. You saw him earlier when I was going the other direction. He was ahead of me because he wasn't paying attention. And if he is like that, I want him to take a couple steps back so he's back in position. Another thing I want to say, let me, get him, let, me, let me get him in position. This really, really, really pays off down the road. Because at first you're like, why do this? That's how I was. But then it pays off down the road. Stand. Always when you stop and you're talking, whenever you stop, make them stand square. Meredith Hodge just taught me this, and it's like, at first I was like, why? Who cares? You're just leading. It pays off down the road because when you start to ride and mount, everybody's like, you know, when they're selling a horse, they're always right, stands for mounting. This is how you teach the horse to stand for mounting. Whenever you stop, you squ square them up. Teach them to stand there because then later when you're getting on on the saddle, you just stand there and go stand and he'll stand square and you just get right on. It works so good. So it's a little something you're doing now that's going to pay off later, which is awesome. All right, the next problem I had with Charlie was him diving for the grass. Doing all this pretty much does solve that problem. Now if he wants to eat, because of course a horse is going to want to try his whole life. They want to eat. Now I'll just give him a, keep it long, just give him one tug if he like turns his head to eat. That pretty much corrects it. He never just dives for it anymore. If they dive for it, you have a horse that's really um, persistent and it still kind of dives for it. This is what I do to Charlie if it, if it happens. Just this is kind of punishment, but it's not that harsh. I'll go like this. Move that butt away from me. Just in one circle. Just one circle like that. And then I always do it the other way. And I don't particularly like this. You don't have to be mean. Stand. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be aggressive. Just that. They don't really like that because they're kind of lazy. And then I'll stand them. Come on. Stand. Get back in position. Stand. Lincoln, get away. Stand. Look, he's already like, don't make me go in another circle. Because they're gentle. So that's kind of his punishment. Some people really get after him and make him circle. You don't have to. Why waste your energy <laughs> if less is more, you know? Less does the trick. Just do less. The other one that he kind of did that I solved also, and a lot of mules will do this. There's a little mule thing, is they just won't walk. They'll just stand there. And they're heavy in the front end, so they have power. And you're like, come on, walk. And they're just like, no, I'm not walking. I find... If you turn around and look at him like you're walking, he stops and you're like, get to the end of your lead line and you just turn around as soon as he stopped walking. That is the worst thing you could ever do. Don't turn around. If he stops walking, stay this way, but keep a little pressure on the line like this and just stand there for a second. Usually, and then maybe just do a little like this. Gentle, don't kill yourself. He will start walking again. Now let's just say you have an extra stubborn one and he didn't walk when you did that for a second. Give him a second because, you know, we're nice to him. We love him. We've got to get their brain chance to keep going. 
then what I would do is the punishment circle again. Just take your lead line, gentle, it doesn't have to spin at 90 miles an hour like a top, and then just go like, go around. You don't want his shoulder on you when you're spinning. He's got to be over there when you're spinning. And then you do one in the other direction. Like keep his shoulder off you. He's got to be out there all by himself, not near you. Stand. Another thing to get your mule to mind you better, gently, you can just teach him to back up. This is the one thing where you might have to increase that pressure where it pays off, where you can be a little forceful. Because I'm usually like trying to train gentle, you know, just because, I don't know, I'm just kind of not lazy at all, but I just don't want to have to chase them around. Is you want them to back up for you easy. That's showing respect for you. They're yielding to you like you're the boss. And dominant ones like him don't really want to do that. So I'll ask him nice, back up. And he's kind of lazy about it. He's like, well, I will, but I don't really want to. And some days he's worse than others, I must say. Like, I'll take that. He's slow and calm. That's fine. If he didn't, still, from back here, I don't get him up here and get over here and try to do it. From over here, I will add a little with both hands, and I'll be like, you back up. And over there, I don't follow him. He's got to do it by himself. You don't chase him back. He has to do it by himself. That's the key. In the beginning, sometimes treats work for some of them. I'm not against giving them treats, but I've learned after they know you're not going to hurt them and they like you, I don't give treats when he does stuff. So in the beginning, yes, you just get a new mule. Give it six months. Give it some treats when you're brushing it and stuff. Great. After six months to even maybe a year, if you have one that doesn't bond quickly, like this one, because he's very independent, even after a year, you know, try not, try to wean him off the treats. The only time I give treats, this is number four, to tell you the truth, <laughs> that's really going to help you. This is, helps you down the line as well. A lot of people will say, oh, my horse or mule's in a hurry to get back to the barn. Don't give them treats when you get back to the barn. I give him treats when I catch him. When I go out to get him, I want him to be like, yay, here she comes. I'll brush him, give him treats while he's tied up there, tacking up, everything like that. I go out for a ride. I come home. He gets nothing. I don't want him thinking when I'm out on the trail, oh, as soon as I get home, I get a treat. Just that little, that little thing in their mind is something for them to look forward to. And they'll rush home to get that treat. So no treats after the trail rides, nothing. You just bring them back, let them stand there for a while and put them back in the pasture. Only give them treats when you catch them and that way every time you wanna catch them, they're happy to come to you. Okay, that's it. That's my little bit of advice to try to help you with your mule and it works really good with me and you can see he's like standing here like a good boy and if he were to be wiggling all around, the first thing I would do to correct him is I'd make him go back a little bit. Then I'd try to give him a chance again to stand here. And if he didn't, I'd do his little, I want to call him his little punishment circles. I, I don't know what else to call him. And just go one time in each direction. 